Bruh. Underdog has Darrell Williams rushing prop for tonight's game against the Chargers at 14 and a half. Let me drop a little, let me drop a small gargantuan fact on you. Darrell Williams had eight rushing yards last game. Okay, so he did not hit this over last game. The Chiefs got up by a zillion points and Frank Gore's little sister ended up getting the garbage time touches. Prior to last week's game for the Chiefs, Darrell Williams has hit this rushing prop in 10 straight games. All right, from weeks three through 13, he went over 14 and a half rushing yards in every single game, 10 straight. And then last week when they blew him out, he just didn't happen to get the carries. All right, now they play the Chargers. Thursday night football, Chargers can't stop a soul on the ground. So this Darrell Williams, over 14 and a half, right? Clyde edwards Lair has looked fine. He's getting touchdowns and whatnot, but it's very clear they want to use a committee here in Kansas City, and it's against the Chargers, man. Bottom five, bottom two in terms of fantasy points allowed to the running. Darrell Williams, over 14 and a half rushing yards tonight. Absolute lock of the McGainum, all right? Underdogfantasy.com, the link to download the app, Google, App Store, whatever. Just click that first link in the description. It'll take you directly there, and if you deposit your first time depositing and you use the promo code BDGE, you're going to get a double deposit. All right. So if you put down 10, you're going to get 20. If you put down 20, you're going to get 40. If you put down 50, you're going to get 100. Put it all on Darrell Williams and then pick whatever other player prop you like for tonight's game. But that's an absolute locky lock, goat lock. It is week 15. It is upon us. Thus, we're talking about my rankings. My rankings are live. They are available on BDGE dot store right now. And we're going to run through each position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and talk about the guys that I have either ranked much higher or much lower than consensus expert ranks as per fantasypros.com. I'm ready to hit the intro. Y'all are ready to stop listening to me talk about shit pre-intro, but it is rude to skip introduction, so y'all better have hung out until this point. If you did, make sure you know what to do next. That is tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling, and let's eat. Again, these rankings are available if you're a big dog member. BDGE.store forward slash community is where you can sign up. We're going to run through the quarterback position first, and I'm not going to point out every single player because most of them are probably in line with most of the expert consensus rankings. But the first one that kind of jumps off a little bit to me is Jalen Hurts. I currently have him down at quarterback 13 where expert consensus has him at quarterback nine. I am concerned with these practice reports of him splitting time with Gardner Minshew. That tells me one of two things. He's not going to play. He's clearly not fully healthy. We'll put it that way. The ankle is still bothering him. And if that is the case, Jalen Hurts' fantasy value plummets. If there's a committee there, that's a problem. If he doesn't play, obviously a problem. Gardner Minshew will be a viable fantasy streamer against this Washington team this week. But Jalen Hurts, I would be prepared to have someone else starting over Jalen Hurts or be prepared to have someone just completely filling in for Jalen Hurts altogether if he doesn't end up playing. Speculation is that he will play, but if this is some sort of committee, it's going to kill Hurts. And if he can't run the ball, then what usage is he to you in fantasy football? On the flip side, right behind him, I have Justin Fields at quarterback 14. And I think I'm going to put Fields ahead of Jalen Hurts based on the reports today. Justin Fields currently ECR of 17. So he's outside of that like streaming range, but I think he should be up there. Uh, Minnesota's defense is nothing that you should be nervous about. Justin Fields, another week recovered from the injury. His rushing upside has been showing recently. And he's someone that you can absolutely stream this week. Someone who's going like 50, 60, 70 yards on the ground week in and week out. If he gets a little bit of touchdown luck, didn't look great last week, but Green Bay Packers pass defense is really, 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 really good. So I'm not looking too much into that. Uh, so Justin Fields is someone I would probably play over. Jalen Hurts moving down the list. And Mac Jones at quarterback 20 as opposed to quarterback 26. So both those guys are six spots higher than expert consensus. And I actually might play Mac Jones over Matt Ryan there and put him into the quarterback two streaming option for sure. I'm not sure why he's ranked so low. He's been he's played great. He's played very, very efficiently. Play against Indianapolis. Now, Indianapolis is one of those defense that has very fast linebackers. And when that's the case, they fill those running holes really quickly. Uh, Damian Harris is banged up. So New England wants to rely on the run, obviously, and rely on their defense, of course. But going against Indy, who's kind of a pass funnel, they can let up a lot of points to opposing quarterbacks and opposing wide receivers. They don't let up a lot of points to opposing running backs. So I think Mac Jones should be ranked a little bit higher than he's getting credit for this week and is absolutely a streaming option for me. Let us move over to the running back position. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of craziness going on right now with COVID and with injuries and all that kind of shit. And when I do my rankings, basically what I'll do is if a guy missed last week, whether it was with COVID or injury, and he is not back at practice yet this week, i.e. guys like Elijah Mitchell, DeAndre Swift, et cetera, those are guys that I don't put into my rankings. So right now, 
Uh, Antonio Gibson, I have at running back nine, playing against Philadelphia, which is not exactly an easy defense to play against, but they're much easier to run against than they are to pass against. He is consensus running back 14, so I'm a little bit higher than consensus on Gibson. J.D. McKissick still not back at practice, so as of this moment, we're expecting him not to play. Gibson obviously had a bad game last week. He ended up getting benched, but I don't I mean, I don't think they're going to hold that against him. As long as he holds on to the ball and McKissick is not playing, Gibson's ceiling is going to be a lot higher than he's currently being given credit for. I also have Josh Jacobs all the way up at running back 10 when ECR is at running back 15. This Cleveland team is just absolutely fucking decimated, all right? So if there's going to be an upset of the week, it's probably the Raiders over Cleveland. They have nobody on offense, which means more time of possession for Las Vegas. And we don't know what Jalen Richard's deal is. We don't know what anyone and the running back fucking deals are on the Raiders outside of Josh Jacobs. So he's going to be heavily, heavily involved. He's continuing to see five, six, seven, eight targets per game. So we're talking about time of possession up. You can run the ball against Cleveland. We're talking about carries up. We're talking about all these things being up. Darren Waller out again, most likely. So they don't have a lot of weapons to, to go to. So Josh Jacobs should be super, super involved in this one. Not really sure what Darrell Henderson's status is yet, uh, but if he's not back, Sony Michelle is going to be an RB1 again. He got 20 carries last week. He goes against uh, Seattle this week, and Seattle is one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. So be super, super confident throwing Sony Michelle back into your lineup. Austin Eckler. So they play the Chiefs this week. Obviously, we know Eckler's dealing with this ankle injury. I have him down at running back 17. ECR has him at running back three. If he was fully healthy. Yes, of course, I'd have him up at running back three. It's a good matchup against KC, whose defense has been much, much better the last uh, month of the season or so. They've already said that he's not going to get his usual workload. Um, I think we've probably seen this before where they said that and then he gets a ton of touches. So it's possible I'm way too low on him. But I just think there are a lot of guys that are kind of on like the fringe borderline of you know, should I play Austin Eckler or should I play these guys? And I have Sonny Michelle ranked above him if Darrell Henderson misses. I have Javante Williams above him. I have Aaron Jones above him. I have David Montgomery above him. Um, I actually have Clyde Edwards Hilaire a little bit above Austin Eckler as well. So those are guys that I would probably play over Eckler, given the fact that it's a short week. The injury seemed semi impactful to Austin Eckler. So Eckler, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit cautious on, but obviously, you know, I have him at running back 17. So there's not a lot of teams that have, you know, four guys, three guys, including flex spots that you could play Eckler. I'm not like complete fade on Eckler, but I'm a little bit nervous given the reports of him probably not playing a full workload. We have Chase Edmonds. Okay. So Chase Edmonds is another one where he could be a huge, huge winner this week, right? He was supposed to be activated off the IR, ended up not playing on Monday Night Football. James Conner got hurt in the last play of the game. He's supposedly day-to-day. What does that mean? I don't know. It looked it looked semi-significant. There's a chance that Chase Edmonds gets activated. James Conner takes a back seat. DeAndre Hopkins already out. James Conner could be out for the game as well. If that's the case, Chase Edmonds is going to be leaned on super, super heavily. So I have Chase Edmonds up at running back 20 right now. A lot's going to change between now and kickoff because of James Conner and Chase Edmonds, both of their statuses. If James Conner misses time, misses this week, they're against Detroit. They're probably going to fucking pummel them. They're going to have really good game scripts. This is a spot where maybe even Eno Benjamin can get into a flex spot because I doubt, you know, coming off the high ankle sprain, Chase Edmonds picks up the James Conner workload where he's getting 20 carries and seven targets or something. It's probably going to be a split backfield, but I feel confident enough in Chase Edmonds where we've seen him handle the workload if James Conner or, you know, Kenyon Drake last year misses time. We just know that this coaching staff has faith in Chase Edmonds. We just have to make sure he's activated from the IR. So I have him up ranked pretty, pretty highly with the notion that James Conner does not play. Going to get a ton of questions about Zeke. I have Zeke down at running back 25. I have not running back 25, which means he is absolutely sittable, right? I have Rashad Penny right above him. I have Deonta Foreman right above him. I have Devonta Freeman right above him as well. Dude, Zeke, supposedly healthy, got less carries, got fewer carries than Corey fucking Clement last week, all right? I, there's not much more I need to say there, and Tony Pollard should be back this week. He did not practice on Wednesday, actually, so there's a chance that Tony Pollard misses this game again. Zeke will get the volume in that case, but it's not going to be efficient volume, and you have to make sure he scores, so I have, I have Zeke down at uh, running back 25, and he's kind of in the same mold as A.J. Dillon, honestly, who I have right behind him at running back 26. Right behind them, Michael Carter. So Michael Carter is going to be making his long-awaited return. I have him at 27. ECR is him at 36. Clearly, nobody has even come close to taking a hold of this backfield with Michael Carter being out for this elongated period of time. A couple problems is like, you know, first game back from a multi-week injury. I've done the study before. If you've missed multiple weeks, two, three, four, five weeks or whatever, almost all all the players that come back from that over the last like two to three years see a diminished workload as compared to their average workload 
up to that point in the season. So I, you know, Michael Carter started getting, you know, 16, 17, 18 carries, four, five, six targets a game. I expect that to be scaled down a little bit. First game back, you know, 12 carries, maybe three to four targets. The other thing is Zach Wilson is their quarterback right now. So he's not someone who dumped off to Michael Carter a lot. So Michael Carter is playable, assuming he plays. Miami has been a very tough matchup as of recently for running back. So a little bit of uncertainty when it comes to Michael Carter and his status for this week. I expect him to play, but as to how much he plays, as to how effective he is, that will be a little bit tough to get a to get a read on. So I have Michael Carter down at running back 27, playable in your flex spot, but not someone I'm like super excited to get into there. Same thing with Damian Harris at running back 29, dealing with a hamstring injury. It seemed serious when it happened. He had the bye week. Uh, he's been limited at practice all week, so I do expect him to play. But they're at Indy, so tough matchup. Very good run defense. I think because he's a little bit limited, he'll split carries with Ramondre Stevenson, who I have down at running back 31. So I have Harris ranked above Stevenson because Harris is the starter. Harris is the guy who's going to get the most carries if he is playing. Neither of them are guys that I want to run into my lineup at all. As you can see, running back 29, running back 31. But they're usable if you're super, super desperate. Who else do we have to keep an eye on? So keep an eye on Royce Freeman out in Houston. Great matchup against Jacksonville. David Johnson out. Everybody out for Houston right now. Jordan Howard, I think, is also playable, assuming he does actually end up playing. Him and Miles Sanders will probably be the 1A, 1B there. Devontae Booker also keep an eye on because Saquon Barkley missed yesterday's practice. So if he ends up missing time, could be a really good opportunity for him. He's shown us that he could handle 20 touches a game, and they're going to give him that uh, amount of work, especially in the passing game. Jeff Wilson as well. I have up at 41. ECR is in 54. He'll jump all the way up probably to like a top 25-ish, 26 running back if Elijah Mitchell misses this game. Again, great matchup. We'll get the workload. A lot of moving parts still in the running back conversation. At wide receiver, first one that jumps off the board, Debo Samuel down at wide receiver 11 as opposed to wide receiver 6 where they have him in ECR. He's just not a wide receiver 6. Like, it's it's really not that difficult to see. He's not getting targets. He's gotten like four targets over the last four games. As he gets healthier, maybe he'll play a little bit more outside. But as long as if Elijah Mitchell misses this, misses this game, he's going to be a running back, okay? And running backs obviously get less targets. Uh, they get less receptions, which means less PPR points. So Debo Samuel down a little bit on him. I have Brandon Ayuk. Conversely, six spots ahead of ECR. I have him up at wide receiver 18 whereas ECR is him at wide receiver 24. I think if you have Ayuk, you're playing him. Great matchup versus Atlanta. Again, if Elijah Mitchell's out, Debo Samuel will play in the running back role. And Brandon Ayuk's been seeing a ton of targets, a ton of receptions, and this should be a matchup where they move the ball pretty easily. And he's a possession guy, so he should get a lot of possession targets. So I have Brandon Ayuk as a really, really solid wide receiver too. Right behind him, I have Devontae Parker as wide receiver 19, ECR as wide receiver 29. This is with the news that Jalen Waddell, of course, just got put on the COVID list. He will not be playing on Sunday against the Jets. So you have one a great fucking matchup. Two, they have no running backs healthy right now, so they're not going to have a running game. Everything is leaning towards Devontae Parker, Mike Isicki getting about a zillion targets in this one. So Devontae Parker has shown a really high floor, and now he gets a great matchup, so he should have a really high ceiling with Waddle out. So I absolutely love Devontae Parker as a rock solid wide receiver, too. Same thing with Mr. Van Jefferson. I have him up at wide receiver 21. ECR has him as wide receiver 27. You got a great matchup versus Seattle. Odell Beckham's on the COVID list. And Van Jefferson, since Robert Woods went down, has done nothing but make big plays, be explosive, and be great for your fantasy lineup. So I have Van Jefferson up at wide receiver 21, which is ahead of Marquise Brown, ahead of Brandon Cooks, ahead of Michael Pittman, ahead of DK Metcalf. I have Metcalf down at 25, and ECR still has him at wide receiver 17. Metcalf hasn't done a fucking thing in like a month and a half. Now he gets the Rams, and Jalen Ramsey will probably be back, which means he'll get a heavy dose of Jalen Ramsey. I don't know what we're doing here, all right? DK Metcalf cannot be inside your top 15 fantasy wide receivers at this point. Christian Kirk needs to be moved up with DeAndre Hopkins on the IR and out for the rest of the season. Christian Kirk becomes the number one, in my opinion, in Arizona. Great matchup against Detroit. I have him up at wide receiver 27, so you can definitely get him into your lineup. ECR has him at wide receiver 33, so we absolutely love Mr. Christian Kirk. DJ Moore with his hamstring injury. I have him down at 28 against Buffalo. I know they don't have Tredavious White, but they're still at Buffalo, so that's a really tough matchup. On the road, ECR is in wide receiver 21. We don't know what's going on with the quarterback position. Cam Newton, P.J. Walker in a platoon, Sam Darnold activated from IR. Who fucking knows what happens? Again, the hamstring injury, I think, is going to linger a little bit and be uh, more of a problem for more than we're probably being attuned to. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Next guy up, I have five spots higher than consensus. I have him up at 32. Census has him at 37. Does not look like Swift is going to play. Does not look like TJ Hawkinson is going to play. If that's the case, Amon Ross St. Brown is in line for another double-digit target game, which he is just fucking 
racking them up, right? Put them down, slap them off the fucking table. That's what we can expect from Mr. Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, not an easy matchup against Arizona, of course, but if you're going to give him 10 targets, like just throw him into your goddamn lineup. Who else do we got? Gabriel Davis I have up at wide receiver 37. ECR has him at wide receiver 47. This is a tough matchup against Carolina, uh, but with Emmanuel Sanders out, Gabriel Davis's playing time shoots up. We want wide receivers attached to Josh Allen. Of course. So we have Gabriel Davis up as a, a viable flex wide receiver three spot for you. I have Laquan Treadwell a little bit higher than consensus going against Houston. He's been like borderline the wide receiver one there in Jacksonville. Now they do not have Urban Meyer, which might mean they use a sensible game plan, which also might mean Laquan Treadwell might be out of the fucking lineup at that point. But, you know, wide receiver 48. All right, let's move over to the last of the positions. That's tight ends. And I have the first five tight ends in my rankings are tit for tat, titty for tatty. With ECR, we have George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Rob Gronkowski, Mark Andrews, Dawson Knox. After that, I have Zach Ertz at, at tight end six. ECR is in tight end 10. Zach Ertz has been great for Arizona. Again, no more DeAndre Hopkins, possibly no James Conner, so maybe they don't lean on the run game as much. I think, I mean, Zach Ertz is a mid to high end tight end one uh, as long as DeAndre Hopkins is out, which is the remainder of the season. So get him in your lineup. Get Mike Kosicki in your lineup. ECR is him at 12. I have him at tight end eight. Again, with no Jalen Waddle. This is what happens in Miami, man. No running backs, no Jalen Waddle. They just give volume and volume and volume to a very, very secluded funnel of guys. And right now it's going to be Gesicki and it's going to be Devontae Parker. So put him in there as a high volume play. Tyler Conklin, I have three spots above ECR as well, up at 12. So he's a legitimate tight end one in my rankings. ECR is him at 15. Since Adam Thielen's gone down, uh, Tyler Conklin is part of this very secluded target funnel, which is him, KJ Osborne, and Justin Jefferson. So I think you can absolutely get... Tyler Conklin into your lineups. I have Kyle Pitts down at 13, where ECR has him at nine. I mean, again, for the 92nd week in a row, God doesn't fucking do shit. He caught one passing garbage time last week that went for like 30 yards, which is the only reason he didn't finish with like 35 receiving yards again. So I'm not excited about getting him into my lineups. That's really it. Everybody else stinks. Do not put Ricky Seals Jones into your lineup. He played less snaps than fucking John Bates last week. I guess we can hit defense real quick. Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles, man. They are, if they're still available on your waiver wire and you need like a solid defense, they're my number three. And I think I could argue them up to number two. Philadelphia has been playing well on defense. Philadelphia gets play against Washington, who has half of their offense either hurt. Terry McLaurin is out. Uh, Curtis Samuels playing limited snaps. Taylor Heineke is banged up. Kyle Allen's on the COVID list. Half of their offensive line is on the COVID list. I think they're they're up to their fourth or fifth string center right now because of COVID. I think Philly might actually come away from this game with seven sacks. So if you need a streaming defense and Philly is still on your wire, please, 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 please hit Philadelphia. If you're really desperate, I think the Raiders, they were a great pass rush in the beginning of the year. Things kind of tailed off, uh, off a little bit. Their coverage and pass rush was really, really good. They're playing Cleveland, and again, just like uh, with Washington, but even to a worse detriment, Cleveland's offense has nobody playing right now. Everybody is sick. Everybody's on, in a hospital bed right now. Everybody has COVID. Baker Mayfield, Cream Hunt is hurt. Half their offensive line, COVID. Jarvis Landry out. Austin Hooper out. Harrison, like literally everybody on, on the Cleveland offense is hurt right now. So I think Las Vegas Raiders should be looked at as a possible streaming defense for this week. All right, y'all. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. Just wanted to get something quick out for you guys. Again, if you want the full rankings, half PPR, PPR standard, whatever, for your first round of the playoffs, bdge.store forward slash community. And make sure you go hit underdog over 14 and a half rushing yards for Mr. Darrell Williams tonight. Lock of the fucking Meganum. Use promo code BDGE if it's your first time depositing on underdogfantasy.com. I love y'all. I'm out. Good luck.